Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Edge Sports Network. We got another interview for you guys today. We got Tariq Coburn, Hofstra Men's Basketball. Tariq, thanks so much for joining us here on the side today. How's it going, guys? Appreciate appreciate being here. Great to have you on. Uh, first guy we've had on from New York, uh, going to a New York school. So you're kind of setting the way here for the other guys that we might have on in the future. But I want to start, I mean, what kind of first got you introduced to the game of basketball? I mean, do you kind of recall your first memories of playing? Yeah, well, when I first started, I never really, like, played for an actual team. I just played, like, you know, like, on recess, for like, mm-hmm. you know, like, in high school, junior high school. I always played soccer on a, an original team. Mm-hmm. But then around, like, seventh grade, I tried out for a team. And I, did, I, did, I got cut. Like, it was like a... um a traveling team. Mm-hmm. I tried out, you know, I worked out with my cousin. He was a, he was a division one player at Fairfield. Uh, he ch- taught me how to shoot, you know, dribble. So that's when I really started to, like, work on my game. He said, yeah, I'm really tall. So, like, I just like, stopped playing soccer, and I should, like, mm-hmm. focus on basketball. So that's when that started. And then, you know, I tried out for my high school team. You know, made, I made, made JV, and I just started building up from then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's worked out for you so far i'd say you definitely picked a uh, a good path with basketball um and i mean i know i saw on your your player page over on hofstra's site here that you really kind of admire steph curry d rose so i mean growing up you know d rose was more prevalent back when you were growing up and stuff steph curry kind of the guy in today's league but i mean what do you kind of admire about those guys' games and you know what kind of aspects of their game did you try and kind of incorporate into yours well, at first when you know when Derrick Rose was at his prime, mm-hmm. MVP of the league, like I definitely admired like his like how humble he was. Yeah. Of like his the way he carries himself like before games, his uh game routines and and off the court too. That's what I admire about Derrick Rose. Like he's like really worked extremely hard too. Mm-hmm. And athleticism, I, I like I love like you know uh athletic dunks like mm-hmm. trans. Close to I, I love all parts of his games like that, and uh, as I went on, like you know, I became more of a shooter. Like it's like so, I just, just transitioned to more like favoring Steph Curry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just be more of like a shooter, especially like his Davidson highlights. Like I, I watch that like almost all the time. Like oh yeah, at least once a week during the season. I'm like yeah, like that's just that's just inspiring. Inspires me to uh, want to uh, do better. Oh yeah, I mean Curry, just amazing, just amazing. I mean, there's no one like him in the league right now. And then D Rose, as you were as you were saying, absolutely explosive. I mean, absolutely explosive. I mean, so you're saying you kind of look towards Curry's college game. I mean, do you look towards uh, his kind of time on the Warriors as well, or do you really focus mostly on his college game? I did mostly look at his college games because, mm-hmm. like, but he he's almost like a different person from college to uh, NBA. So I, I would look forward to like you know trying to add more on. So you know, since he did it, like, why can't I do it? You know. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I mean, not a bad guy to look up to either. Curry has certainly seen his fair share of success in the league so far, and I'm sure he's going to see a lot more of it. Um, So I know you had a very successful high school career as well. We'll get into that in a second. But prior to high school, I assume you knew you wanted to play high school basketball. But was college basketball kind of already a goal, or was it something you kind of had to figure out once you got to high school? I mean, before you went into high school, was college basketball already on the mind, or, or were you kind of just going to see how things worked? Uh, college basketball was, like, I guess it was always on the mind. But mm-hmm. I wasn't really that, like, for sure. Like, you know, Division One, I wasn't I wasn't really into all that, uh, like, the categories and stuff like that. Because mm-hmm. when, I, when I came in, I, I played with a player who had, you know, he was a, almost, like, he was an All-American pretty much. Mm-hmm. He had... The high major schools coming to our practice, and I'm we're like we're in JV. Like I don't know why these high major schools coming. Like his name yeah. is Race Race. Yeah. So, like being exposed to, like that much like levels of uh competition every day in practice. Like that just motivated me to want to do better. Mm-hmm. So because I went to a re- like, very competitive like high school, like so many people um that wanted to like that 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 kind of got recruited kind of to this to the high school, but like so many people that um top players that wanted to play for them so mm-hmm. it was like I was just you know from the jump like always trying to be better than everybody so mm-hmm. that's so that's why I transitioned from like barely playing my um 
sophomore year of like varsity to like now being like the star player of the uh, high school. Oh, for sure. I mean, I think it's always helpful kind of to, you know, face those challenges early on in your career, kind of face those guys that are getting a lot of exposure, face a high level of competition. Because in college, I mean, the way you got to look at it going into D1 college basketball, every guy was kind of the star of their high school. So every guy is going to have talent. So to get exposed to that early, certainly very helpful for your college career. And in high school, I mean, you were unbelievable. Your senior season, both personally and as a team, you guys went 27-3. and three. You averaged 20 points a game, 7.1 rebounds, 2.8 assists. You were efficient as well, shot 51% from the field as a guard, which we don't really see much. I mean, guys down low, that's one thing. But as a guard, that's very high efficiency. Were there any parts of your game that you really focused on in high school once you kind of knew that college basketball D1 was going to be a possibility? Well, um, shooting, scoring, uh, mm-hmm. re- like rebounding too because I was a big guard. Mm-hmm. So rebounding and pushing was like my main emphasis, my coach told me. For um, sure. Yeah, so they said like being a shooter, being a, uh, you know, 6'5 shooter, athletic shooter mm-hmm. will go a long way. So that's why I just I just always like – Made sure like I'm getting up extra shots, and keeping that as a, one of my like main strengths because that that forever goes a long way. Mm-hmm. For sure, I mean shooting is just three point shooting has always kind of been there, but now it's like everything. I mean you kind of see everyone shying away from that play down low. Everyone needs shooters. There's always going to be a spot for shooters on the team, and I mean I know you started your career in college at Saint Bonaventure. You'd eventually transfer to Hofstra. But you're from New York. You elect to kind of go to these two New York schools. Do you find that being used to that New York style of play from your high school days, you know, that Northeast style of play kind of helped you in college? Because I know uh, I've talked about it with many guys here. Every kind of region of the country has their own style of play. So did you find that since you were already kind of accustomed to that new Northeast type of play that you kind of had that transition a little bit easier? Yeah, for sure. When I... um. When I was in, you know, when I was in high school, Hofstra recruited me too. Mm-hmm. So I always had them in my mindset, and they they played the same style, like a running gun mm-hmm. type of uh, offense, as in my high school. So when I went to uh, St. Bonaventure, it was just like it was kind of a little bit, little bit different. It was like so much set oriented, like everything we everything we had to do was set. So we had like multiple, like I think it was almost like a hundred plays, probably it had to have been. Mm-hmm. Jeez, <laughs> yeah, <but> wow. <laughs> A lot of like learning, like we had like um, practice like twice a day, so, like in the beginning, like pra- one practice just to be on plays alone. So really, it was so much. Like I, I yeah, I, I couldn't remember that. I'll tell you what, I, I would not. I would I if if I remembered like five plays, I'd be pretty pretty happy with that. So, um, that is because so our, our our coach had like a it was like a cheat sheet in the game. He had a a. He had like a printed out copy of like all the plays, so that was wow. that was just funny. Man, that is a lot of plays right there. So I gotta ask you. I mean, going off, I was unaware that you kind of had to remember that many plays. I mean, going off of that, um, I mean, I would assume that's really tough when when you kind of have to memorize plays like that and, and kind of know where you have to be. Does that change your style of play at all? I mean, do you, did you feel a little bit restricted to that, or did you feel like you could kind of? improvise on the plays a little bit I guess kind of go off of that you know cheat sheet that your coach had in the beginning as a freshman I was just trying to you know know all the plays and just mm-hmm. execute it so I wasn't really I, I did feel like restricted in a way mm-hmm. but um ma- mainly the upperclassmen like really just like did not like come out the game at all yeah so exactly like usually most fr- no freshmen really play for him mm-hmm. ever so that's that's just I just had to just sit back and learn from mm-hmm. like uh much two two guards there was um was a uh, um all time well all conference guards and one of them is like about the one of them's in the uh two he's on a two way contract right now mm-hmm. and he's um he's I think he's about to get uh picked up for this uh NBA return oh right yeah now. this like, tournament type thing that they got going on yeah yeah Jalen Adams that's his name I oh wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, that that's definitely tough in your freshman year right there. But, I mean, good learning experience, I would assume, just to kind of, I mean, see what's kind of going on in college basketball, kind of see that pace, 
of course, you're practicing with the guys too. I know you played in 12 games uh, over at St. B's. Um, I mean, you didn't see the floor all that much, but you still do get that learning experience. And I think it kind of benefited you. We saw that when you came over to Hofstra. Uh, with the transfer process there, I mean, how is that decision? Is that kind of a tough decision for you to make? I know you said you had Hofstra kind of in the back of your mind all along here um, since they had recruited you coming out of high school. But how was that transfer process for you? How did you feel like you kind of fit in once you got to Hofstra? Well, um, the transfer process, I didn't know exactly where I wanted to go at first. Mm -hmm. Um I knew I couldn't stay at that school because it was going to probably be the same with returning players, probably be mm -hmm. the same, like, style. And it was just, like, the environment at St. Bonham, which was, like, a small school, like a thousand people. We saw the same people every day. Mm -hmm. uh, very small town. Like, I just, you know, I'm a city kid, so, like, yeah, uh, yeah. When, bas when basketball isn't, like, going, like, what else is there to do mm -hmm. outside? Mm -hmm. That's, like, that could probably be, like, you know, not really good for your mental health either, I yeah. think, you know? nobody to talk to stuff like that so when i when i'm, when I'm transferring the process juco schools was reaching out to me and i wasn't really sure if i wanted to go to juco yet mm -hmm. so i just like so i'm like right, I'll, I'll, I'll take a red shirt you know probably work on my game uh transition better to for college and so that i did that i, I looked into hofstra mm -hmm. and it was close to home too so i'm like I, i'd rather be close I'd rather be close to home for my next decision in case something else goes wrong. Mm -hmm. I can't transfer again. I'll I'll be okay. With, you know, being talking to my fans and friends, talk to my fans and friends. So. Oh, exactly. When I, yeah, yeah. So that was I think that was like the best decision from the uh, jump. Oh yeah, I mean it. It definitely has worked. I mean, your first season with Hofstra here, thirty-five games, twenty-four minutes per game. Just a huge difference between your first year and your second year. That that's just a massive jump. So when you have to kind of come in and handle much more of a workload, I mean, was that transition difficult? You see a huge increase in play here. Um, did you kind of have to get adjusted to the pace of college basketball? I know you saw your freshman year, didn't really get to experience it much. Now you experience it for 35 games. How was making that move? I mean, I felt, I felt very comfortable and confident. Mm -hmm. I felt like, I felt like I've, um, I've learned a lot from my freshman year, and I was I was just ready to play. Even mm -hmm. my freshman year, I, I was ready to play. Mm -hmm. So now I got the opportunity, and I just took advantage of it. For sure. For sure. I mean, you had a great season to start off. I mean, 8.4 points per game, 4 rebounds. Your shooting efficiency stayed there, 45%. And from behind the arc, 43%. I mean, that would make Steph Curry proud, I can tell you that. And this past year, you also shot the three ball well, 39% from three. So... A lot of guys can shoot the three. Not many can be efficient from range, though. So, I mean, what's the key to kind of finding those open looks? I would assume it's a obviously a ton of training, a ton of practice. I'd assume team chemistry has to be there as well to kind of have your guys feeding you the ball to get those open looks. And how do you kind of make sure that each three you get up is a high percentage shot? Well, my uh, my first year playing for Hofstra, I had like a, a great guard, another all-conference guard. Mm -hmm. And like all the attention was on him. Nobody knew about me, so I was getting more like, you know, driving kick shots, coming off screen shots. So it was more uh, efficient, just being able to knock it down. And I was, I was always like, I was always in the gym, even before the before the, uh, the game days too. Like mm -hmm. a couple hours before the game, I'm like, I'm up, I'm up shooting, getting some extra shots, being consistent with my routines, mm -hmm. making sure I'm eating the same meals, make sure I'm, you know, getting extra uh, treatments for my body. Just keeping everything, regardless if I'm like have a bad shooter night or a good shooter night, make sure I'm still like doing everything the same. Mm -hmm. So that's that's why like you know I had a high efficiency rate at um 43 percent my mm -hmm. first year, and in my second year it was like everybody all oh, shooter shooter like on all the scouting reports. So they definitely closed out more. Mm -hmm. I did have an injury, my foot injury. So my like the first like month I was like coming off an of injury, so like my uh, my shooting percentage was bad. So I had to like you know towards the end of the season I started like going up. I think mm -hmm. conference play I think was like forty six percent from mm -hmm. three. So that's when I was. That's like my like like my numbers were like being more like accurate and precise. Mm -hmm. For sure. I mean, you definitely stepped it up in conference play, and that's when you want to peak right there. I mean, you peaked at the right time, and you're coming off your best season in college basketball so far. Ten point six points, five and a half rebounds, forty one percent from the field. 
And, and going back to conference play here, I mean, you guys go 26-8 and eight on the season. You beat Northeastern in the CAA championship game. Uh, so I got to know, I mean, what was the atmosphere like in that championship game? As you just mentioned, you really did step it up in conference play. But you guys get that championship. I mean, how was that feeling? How was the celebration? I mean, you go through a long season like that with the year you guys had. I mean, how does that feel? It was like a very euphoric feeling, man. Like, uh-huh. I still, I still couldn't believe it. Like, what a year, for real. Like I know. Like a dream come true to like a, a nightmare <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, yeah, something we've, you know, been working on since the summer we've been talking about cutting down those nets. We lost, lost, we came up just uh, 20 minutes short last year mm-hmm. playing against the same team. So we know it's, it's revenge for, for this game for sure. Yeah. We're not oh, losing yeah. two years in a row. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it, it's, 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 it's crazy, like, play, like working 365 days just for one game. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. it was a lot of pressure, though. It was a lot, oh, a lot yeah. Of pressure. <laughs> for real. I can imagine. I mean, you get to a game like that, not not only 365 days. I mean, you guys work that entire year, but I feel like, you know, you said, you know, you're growing up, college basketball is kind of that goal. You know, you've worked really years to get to that point right there. And, and I mean, to get that win, I'm sure it, it feels so good. I can't even imagine, as you said, just kind of that euphoric feeling. And I know, obviously, you know, with the pandemic and stuff, college basketball kind of just cut short and whatnot. But when you guys are coming off a season like that, you're entering your senior year. I mean, what are what are the goals you got for next year? I mean, I would assume you guys are, are pretty anxious here, and you guys probably think you have a pretty good shot to make an NCAA tournament run. Well, we got um, still got uh, Eli and Israel left, very great players. Mm-hmm. But we we definitely do got some uh, some guys, some low key radar guys, you know, going to step up. Mm-hmm. Uh, me, Isaac, and uh, Jalen Ray, uh, returning starters. Been around the program f- for a while now, mm-hmm. and um, we're looking forward to it. You know, for be sure. on the lookout for us. Can't wait to get back in the gym with my fellows. Yeah, you guys are going to be fun to watch this year. Uh, just coming off a fantastic year last year, um, so definitely a lot of potential for this season. And I know, like with you, I mean, you've been great on the court. We know that, but off the court too. You've been great academically, been named to a commissioner's honor roll, dean's list, you know, you name it. So I imagine it would take a lot of time to just kind of plan out your day, balancing college basketball, balancing academics. But let's say, you know, middle of the season right here, what's kind of the typical day for you? I mean, walk us through it. I'd assume you got practice and stuff, but college basketball player, I mean, they got to balance a lot. So what is a typical day uh, for Tariq Coburn? You don't even want to know. So, <laughs> I had last semester, last school year, I mm-hmm. had um, an organic chemistry class. Which oh, man. My, See, it already it, sounds bad. It already sounds bad. It's bad. Coach, my, when I first worked with my professor, I was like, hey, you're Tariq Cobra. What are you doing here? I was like, yeah, I'm trying to, uh, you know, I'm trying to take this class, you know, trying to be a PA. He's like, wow, mm-hmm. you're going to be the basketball player to ever take organic chemistry at Hofstra <laughs> ever. <laughs> I'm like, Wow. <laughs> So I had class from like you know uh, early in the morning. Like I have like eight a.m. class. Mm-hmm. You know, going to like ten. No, we we'll go into like nine o'clock, and then I'll have tutoring for organic chemistry with the professor, for like t- like nine to t- to like ten ish. Because mm-hmm. I was injured, right? I had a uh, plantar fasciitis on my foot. I had from like eleven to twelve physical therapy. From twelve to like twelve forty-five, I'll have um. I'll have lunch, mm-hmm. and then after that, it'll be another like another classes and practice. And, and like we have weights too, so it'll be every other every other day will be weights. So I'll, I'll, mm-hmm. sometimes I'll be having classes, tutoring, weights, uh, practice, and I have physical therapy. Oh my god! So and when I was like when I didn't have physical therapy, I'd be getting shots up in the gym. So like. Regardless, that that slot was always filled up. So it was in, like I didn't, I didn't go to sleep. My teammates would be like, "Yo, what what are you doing?" <laughs> like even when we would be traveling too, like I still had to travel, still had to take all these classes. They're like everybody's you know sleeping on the bus, lights on. Yo, what is Tariq doing? <laughs> Studying all the time, like in the hotel, like everybody you know after we had practice, everybody's relaxing, watch TV. Tariq, where's Tariq studying? Like it was after a while, it just became like like natural, like. Uh-huh. 
it, it was it was like tiring though because oh, after yeah. practice you have to study and it's just it's just so much like people in my class was even saying like i don't even how are you getting better grades than me and this is all i do <laughs> like oh, it was man. like for real I, I just had to like like manage my time i really mm-hmm. like um I planned out my day for sure like what i could do i can't i can't really play video games i, just, I didn't even bring my ps ps video games to school like it was I oh you can't leave. You can't, man. I, I I can't imagine, you know, just going through that. And, like, not to even mention, you know, that's just one day. Like, I know you got to put, like, throughout the week, five or six of those together. And then on the weekend, you know, I'm sure you're kind of getting shots up, doing work, you know, on the side and whatnot, getting homework done for next week. So you kind of just string all that together. And I'm sure that gets really exhausting right there. Um, but that's the grind, though. And, I mean, it's it's clear that you're kind of, you know, balancing everything well kind of focused on those priorities you know school and basketball setting yourself up you know not only for a good basketball career but life after basketball as well and i know you know those guys saying you know when the light's on what's what's Tariq doing it's clear you're studying for that organic chemistry class i mean you're the only guy to ever take organic chemistry as a basketball player at Hofstra the other guys don't understand that struggle exactly there you go it's always i always had a plan b for real mm-hmm. plan b plan c like I, i'm that type of person like you never know like what could happen any injuries mm-hmm. or i don't even want to say a pandemic but like a pandemic i i mean yeah if if there's any year to show us that anything can happen it's 2020 i mean it's just <laughs> yeah. been one curveball after another here um but i mean i'd say you're one of the guys out here handling it about as best as anyone could, that's for sure. Um, and, I mean, that's just great to see that balance. It's a very tough trait to kind of acquire, uh, especially as a college athlete as well, when you kind of got so much stuff going on. To close up the interview, I always like to end on, you know, a pretty fun question and one maybe that you've thought about before maybe you haven't. We'll see. But first question I want to ask you here, the fun one. I mean, if you could have lunch with any NBA player, past or present, they can be dead or alive, who would it be and why? Um, any NBA player, I probably, uh, I probably choose, I don't know, J.R. Smith, like, I don't know, he Not seems like one. a fake guy, like, <laughs> he does, he does, you see all these memes on him, and just, like, <laughs> interviews, like, I, I just think he's just a cool guy, like, oh, yeah, I love, I love J.R. Smith's game, especially when he was on the Knicks, mm-hmm. yeah, he's a cool guy, so probably, probably talk it up with him. I guarantee he has some good stories. I can tell you that. I guarantee he has some good stories. So yeah, <laughs> it uh, yeah, for- <laughs> it'd be a good lunch to have. It would be a good lunch to have. And now, I mean, he's probably got some more stories about to come out. You know, obviously he's gonna be with the Lakers here. So, I mean, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens there. That's gonna be that's gonna be interesting. The LeBron J.R. Smith reunion. Um, obviously everyone, the last memory they kind of have of that is, is JR messing up in the finals there. And, uh, as you said, you know, JR has about every meme in the book out there. So we'll see what happens down in Disney this year. But, uh, to close up here, Tariq, I want to, I want to end on this. I mean, entering your senior season here, you know, I'm sure you want to have a great finish to the career, but looking after, you know, your time at Hofstra, after your collegiate career here. I mean, let's look five years down the road. What would be kind of the perfect scenario for you? Where would you like to see yourself in the year 2025? Um, that's that's a good question. Mm-hmm. If uh, if I'm able to have a good you know senior year and a uh, full complete one without uh, you know the virus still lingering mm-hmm. around, uh, I would I would I would, um enter the draft, um see where that goes. If mm-hmm. I could probably get a two way contract, that that would be. That'll be a goal for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, if not, uh, overseas play for a couple of years and then go back to um, PA school for two years. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, 2025. I, it's either I'm still playing professional basketball or I'm already graduate PA school and in the, in the, um, working for private pra- my own private practice in the hospital, making six figures, mm-hmm. e- either or. I mean, two very good options right there, no doubt about it. Those are two very good options. I know you said you kind of always have that plan B, so you got two plans kind of locked down, both of them. Um, you know, you're going to see success in either one of those and uh, probably end up pretty happy with, with either one of those options, I would say. But um, 
I mean, hey, I want to say congrats on a fantastic year last year, uh, both as a team and personally. Best of luck this season. I mean, I hope we get started on time. Um, I know a lot of people really looking forward to seeing what you're going to do this year and what Hofstra is going to do this year. But uh, Tariq Coburn, thank you so much for joining us here on the site today. It was great to have you on. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate everything. No problem. No problem at all. I mean, we're we're always glad to have you on. We'd love to have you on again, you know, after the senior year. Um, and we're going to make sure to put your uh, Twitter handle down below so everyone can go follow your career, you know, your last year here at Hofstra and beyond. And then we'll also put a link to Hofstra's website as well if you guys want to follow for news and updates on their men's basketball team. Go ahead and do that. But, guys, once again, thanks so much for joining us here on Edge Sports Network for another interview in our summer series. And as always, we'll see you guys next time.